Okay, so hello everybody. I'm Marco Martin from Italy, and I want to introduce you today the open source project I'm involved in. That is the KDE project, and in particular, um, quite important um, piece of the KDE platform. That is the Plasma platform, and what we did with this platform. So uh, some of the shells and the application that we can uh, develop with. Uh, first of all, what uh, is a KDE? It is a, an open source project, a team of people that is uh, uh, creating software, free and open source software for people to use. Um, our first target was a desktop, a desktop environment and a pretty complete suite of applications. So from what we call the primary user interface, your workspace uh, desktop with the icons, etc., to, um, to uh, typically user applications like uh, a mail client, um, that is contact or um, multimedia library and player that is Amarok or an office suite that is K-Office and we are around uh, since quite a, a long time uh, the project itself is, is born uh, around uh, 1996-97 we were using Qt1 at the time so we, we did follow really closely the development of the Qt framework uh, during all these years and what I'm presenting now is a, a pretty uh, new technology in the KDE uh, framework that is uh, the Plasma platform that is um, around uh, since the first introduction of the uh, fourth series of the KD workspace that is um, uh, what we call KD4 that was launched in the uh, uh, beginning of uh, 1998. Uh, what is Plasma? Is uh, the library and the final product of the primary user interface for computing device. Uh, our first goal, of course, was um, to provide a workspace for the desktop systems. Then we uh, started to, um, to look around at devices that are becoming more and more important and that are uh, um, becoming uh, Effectively, effectively targetable for us because they are becoming powerful enough. So the first uh, move towards something different were, uh, of course, the netbooks. Then uh, uh, smart uh, devices such as smartphones and tablets. They are becoming pretty powerful these days. Hopefully, I uh, will show um, the. Plasma running on uh, a Nokia N900, and we are developing also a um, user interface for uh, a media center type of uh, of devices uh, for for use uh, on devices like uh, connected TVs or things like that. We have some flickering, nice, and uh, all of that is made possible by a um, um, uh, big library that we uh, developed by our um, Plasma platform that, um, that is a library that is um, divided in a visualization part and the visualization part is built on top of QGraphics view and uh, a data part because uh, um, we uh, put a um, big accent in the uh, model view separation. So um, that is a concept that makes really uh, easy to 
give completely different visualization, completely uh, dif different user interface, also on different uh, devices, but uh, without actually having to touch the, uh, the actual logic that could be a, a C++ library that you don't have uh, to touch at all. Uh, a little bit of history that um, I, I can say to, to introduce better the, uh, the uh, scenario, what, uh, uh, what we in KDE did, did in the past years and what lesson we learned and what is the, the new direction of development. Uh, those are actually two screenshots, uh, pretty old, of the uh, KDE version uh, workspace, version 2 and version, version 3. So it's like 2001 and 2004, uh, something like that. The uh, workspace in uh, KDE at the time was uh, managed by two, th uh, three, four different applications that were, of course, uh, uh, on um, X11, uh, on, on the X11 pl uh, platform. Uh, we need uh, uh, a big uh, part of our work workplace uh, must be the window manager. We have uh, one that is called, uh, called Queen. And uh, we uh, kept it also in the, in the fourth uh, revision of the platform because it was uh, um, really easily extensible. Uh, so now, as uh, all the other modern uh, window managers, such as Compute or Gnome Shell, it has uh, uh, support for uh, compositing and uh, OpenGL rendering and a, pl a pluggable uh, effects that it makes easy also for third party to, to write uh, nice effects. The other programs that did manage the workspace in the past were um, K-Desktop. It did manage basically the desktop icons and the wallpapers. It did, uh, it did not nothing else. It did not uh, offer um, Extensib extensibility for third party things like a desktop widget or a, a customization in behavior. Different story was uh, uh, for the panels that were managed by an application called Kicker that was basically a, a shell that loaded uh, small plugins that provided the, the needed fu functionality. So for instance, the menu uh, was a plugin, the taskbar was another one. It did work quite well, but it was also um, a bit limited for uh, mainly two reasons. It's uh, own API, um, because it was really um, limited just to uh, widgets for panels, and also because uh, um, it was based on the queue widgets, that was uh, everything that existed but then but they have uh, some um, internal, internal limitations, as uh, also Alexis said, that, said today. And the uh, last one was born uh, Super Caramba, uh, pretty late in the KD3 uh, series, that um, tried to fill the gap uh, left by, uh, by uh, KDesktop, trying to uh, have some extensibility uh, with desktop widget, but was not compatible with uh, uh, with uh, Kicker, and also the the widget were were not looking really coherent one to the other. So uh, enter uh, uh, the KD workspaces version four. This is mostly how it uh, it looks um, these days also quite better, I would say. And um, all the desktop, of the panels, the, the workspace is managed by um, an application that is uh, based on the Plasma platform uh, that we call Plasma Desktop. It is uh, only one. We don't uh, have any more uh, uh, a set of different application that um, 
manage different aspects of the uh, of the workspace of course module the, the window manager that is always separate and uh, uh, as uh, all the rest of the KD4 platform is based uh, on the on uh, Q4 so we had uh, many new features and a way improved architecture to play on and uh, uh, as an important difference with the other application, we choose from the day one to uh, not uh, use a normal Q widget, but to um, rely on Q Graphics View. Because it, um, I even if, if it's still not perfect, as uh, uh, Alexis said, it, it offers a good improvement over um, over the limitations of, of Q widget and already already quite uh, also performance improved improvement and capabilities improvement like uh, we can now um, apply arbitrary transforms to any object on the scene and um, we were probably one of the first uh, first project that tried to to actually uh, build a, a complete uh, widget set uh, based on on Q Graphics View, so we uh, got some experience on that. That I will share with you um, now. Just two words on the Plasma Desktop. It's not the main topic, so I will um, I will go really uh, fast on that. Uh, as I as I said uh, on. KD3 we had two different, completely different things for extending uh, the desktop with widgets and the panel with uh, with a, a different kind of widget. And this could uh, could uh, look um, uh, quite rational because they um, they need they need to look and behave radically different. But what we want is actually the same thing uh, what uh, we want in a desktop is basically a system that show you some important information at a glance that it could be what running application there are what installed application there are what time is it uh, the weather information R R R RSS news uh, what we want to be quite free um, and what we want to be quite different is how they are visualized so we need basically in different places that could be quite trivial like the panel or desktop or even different de devices we want different visualizations but uh, the same backend uh, the same way to, to fetch data and to um, in brief to, to share as much uh, as the code as we can to not rewrite things and to do things as flexible as we want. So we um, invented the, the concept of, uh, of um, uh, form factors. So um, uh, an applet knows wh where it runs, so knows how it's constrained. And if, uh, so if, if it's enough, the applet can adapt itself. If it's not enough, we, we can switch completely another another uh, widget um, so a completely different visualization but with the same backend that we call data engine that I will talk about